Welcome to another fantastic episode of an awesome show called I Know Jacks. It's been a massive week of progress here at I Know Jacks. Our show is growing and gaining in popularity every single day, which is pretty amazing. And this week I also premiered our first episode of our online only show, which you'll be able to watch every Wednesday. And it's only going to take you a few minutes, so go check that out. You can find it at our website at iknowjacks.com. And please, let me know what you think. Now, first, we're going to go downtown to visit the restaurant Juliet's Bistro and the Omni International Hotel. So, Ernie, I understand you're going to make us one of your one of your entrees, right? Yes, sir. What are you doing, man? We have a, a plantain crusted grouper. Okay. With uh, avocado mousse. Okay. And. Avocado Prep. mousse. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. and is this a dish that you brought here? I mean, is that, I've never heard of that before. San, San Morejo? The San Morejo, yeah. It's, it's, it's local from uh, Puerto Rico. Local and Puerto this, Rico. yes, this dish, uh, I was in the, culinar in the culinary team of Puerto Rico. So today I'm getting to taste an award winning dish. Now I'm excited. Next up, asparagus and baby carrots. So you grew up in Puerto Rico. Tell me a little bit about like what are the flavors and stuff that you're bringing here that's traditional. The sofrito is one. Sofrito is one. Uh, here, uh, I know I noticed that we uh, in, here in, in Jacksonville we eat a lot of crab. So what I'm trying to do is uh, to make like a fusion. Oh, to incorporate fusion. a little bit of both. Exactly. The smell is divine. Mm. Oh, it's lemon. lemon. The grouper was already made. It has crushed plantains on top. Now we're ready to plate the dish. The avocado goes on the bottom. This is my grandma recipe. So Your grandma's yes. recipe. <laughs> it always goes back to grandma, <laughs> man. He carefully balances the grouper. Did you play with Legos a lot as a kid? <laughs> yeah, with my, uh, <laughs> with my daughter. Uh, see, I, I knew this is incorporated <laughs> somehow. Chef Ernie tells me he spends a lot of hours in the kitchen, so when he's at home, he likes to play Legos with his daughter. It's garnished with pretty looking peppers and chives. This dish, uh, I won the competition before right. because of, you have to play with all the ingredients. So right. You have just 10, 10 minutes to, to build a menu and then just one hour to execute. So you, you figured that out in 10 minutes and then executed it within an hour. That impresses the crap out of me, I have to say that. Yeah. That's the difference between a chef and an amateur. And all that Lego building practice seems to have paid off. Just look at this beauty. I'm in the dining room here at Juliet inside the Omni International Hotel, and I'm telling you, this place is incredible. We've got some scallop ceviche, and we've got plantain encrusted grouper, and not to mention a little bit of a glass of wine here. See you guys here at Juliet. Last week I was talking about how much I like to drink stout with a shot of cold pressed coffee. I do, but when it's summer in Florida, stout's not always the best drink for me. So Mark Wisdom has a suggestion of another addition to your craft beer that might actually be a little bit more appropriate when the weather's hot. Today I'm with Mark Wisdom, the beer guy. I'm the beer guy. He's the beer guy. That's and me. we're going to talk about something really weird. Summer shandy, right? Summer shandies. Summer what shandy. the heck is a summer shandy? Well, in essence, it's a beer cocktail. Okay. Uh, it came about in both Germany and England around the same amount of time, same time, uh, around the early 1900s, turn of the century. Uh, basically, what it is is it's a mixture of a soda and a beer, or a soda, uh, a lager, an ale, right. whatever. In Germany, obviously, they have mostly lagers, so right. it's mostly that. And in Germany, they're called Rattlers. Okay. And, well, you know me, there's an interesting story behind it. Of course there of is. Of course there tell is. Tell us about it. I'll <laughs> tell you about it. So, June of 1922. Set your way back, I machine. remember that. Do you? No. You look like you probably <laughs> do. Um, I'll drink to that. Be a break. To the summer June of 1922. June of 1922. It's really, really, really hot and okay. humid in Germany that time of the year. And Germany, Germany is a very outdoorsy type country. A lot yeah. of people like to they like to do stuff outdoors. Yeah. 
you got mountain bikers, you got mountain hikers. Here's this guy named Franz Kuger. Franz, of course. Franz. You're in Germany. You're in Germany. So he realizes he owns a guest house. Right. He realizes he's running low on beer. So what he has to do is he has to figure out how am I going to get beer into these people because it's hot outside, they've been biking, they've been climbing mountains and all day long. The beer. And they expect the beer because it's an expect. It's an so this is another one of those necessity is the mother of invention. Exactly. So he takes a look at what he has in, uh, in and around his guest house and he sees, I got a lot of lemon lime soda. Gotcha. And not a lot of beer. Gotcha. So he mixes the two, names it a Rattler because Rattler is R-A-D-L-E-R, okay. that is what a bicycler is called in Germany. I got you. Not a snake. I was thinking No, no, rattler. not rattler, snake. <laughs> Although there is a shandy called a, a snake, snake bite. bite. Uh, I know that, that is that. cider and beer mixed okay. together. Uh, it's a really cool Very drink. Very popular in England. Very right? popular drink in England. In England is where they call them shandies. Shandy Gap is the real name okay. of it. Shandy is for short. And basically it was... You know, it's a mixed drink. It's uh, a little bit lighter than beer. It's, it's usually around four percent. So it's it's just a nice, great, light summer drink that you can drink a lot of sitting on the front porch. Cool. This one right here from Leinenkugel. 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 I know. Leinenkugel. Funny to say. I love Summer Leinenkugel. shandy. It's a very good beer. I really enjoy it a lot. So. Now I'm glad that he mentioned the snake bite. I'm not a huge fan of myself, but my wife loves them. Now, I would just rather drink the cider without the beer, but hey, that's just me. Now, since it's Father's Day this week, and I think drinking is in order, so next, we're gonna talk about wine. I'm here hanging out with my buddy Chris Chislett, the wine guy, and today we're gonna try something a little bit different, right? A little bit different for us for wine, because we've never actually done a sherry. No, a sherry was something my grandma always Exactly, drank. mine too. Every so morning. Our grandmothers were soused yeah. on sherry. Yeah, my grandma lived to be 200 years old. So, so it's a preservative It is as well. <laughs> preserves you, like pickles you, essentially. I um, actually have never had sherry. Like, I don't drink. I thought it was something you, like, cook. I don't either. People. people don't. Right. I mean, honestly, people don't. Like, right. it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's pointless doing this episode, because this is an amazing, amazing wine. I, I, I say that a lot, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, I really do. I wouldn't be having it on the show if I didn't think it was okay. amazing. But yeah, people really don't drink sherry. You know, we same thing with you know the port episode it's more that of we a just cooking. we did. Yeah, um, typically you wouldn't really cook with this uh, kind of style. Good. Some of the like the right. fino sherries and you know right. just the, like the cooking sherries. But this is the Alvia, um, 1927. Um, so this uh, has been around since 1927. Yep, and we're bringing it on the show. No, kind of not really. It's. <laughs> Okay. No, kind of not really. Yes. Pretty no. much no. no. Um, so with Chevy, what they do, they, um, they use kind of this, what they call like a fractional blending system. So... Is that one of those things that you guys do over in Europe, like the metric system? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. You fractional, guys just kind of played around with like... blending system? Just like Etch-a-Sketch okay. and then just like, no, fractional screw it, we're not going to do that. System. Yeah, so... Explain. The oldest juice in this bottle dates back to 1927. Now, I mean, that could just be like a drop, but they use this, it, essentially the <laughs> sherry itself is non-vintage, right? So okay. the sherry itself, you know, this is a non-vintage sherry, but they use, mm -hmm. if you imagine like a, a pyramid of barrels, okay. all right? So barrels at the bottom, you've got the oldest, right. in this case, from 1927. Right. The juice all the way up at the top, you know, the newest juice from right. last Wednesday. Yeah, right. You know, essentially. <laughs> the boom uh, Yeah, gotcha. and then they're all linked. Okay. So you keep pouring new juice in the top and you take it out from the bottom. So. It's oh, a non-vintage sherry, but you know, I don't know how they're really getting away with, I mean, they label it, you know, 1927 on the actual label. Um, but yeah, it's called, uh, like, they call it a Solera system. Um, Solera, S-O-L-E-R-A. Sure. Solera system is how they essentially blend it the together. The Spaniards come up with the I know, things. but the cool thing is you are actually, I mean, for what it's worth, um, going to be sampling juice from 1927. Okay, cool. So. What kind of grapes are these? Uh, it's a blend of three grapes. Okay. Um, it's kind of, God, now I forgot. Uh, Palomino, Moscatel, and Pedro Jimenez. Pedro, uh, Jimenez. Pedro Jimenez. He's a pitcher for the Dodgers. He is. <laughs> Old Pedro <laughs> Jimenez. Okay. Uh, so. Palomino, Moscatel, and uh, Pedro Jimenez. Um, really That's kind of indigenous name, grapes. Really? Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. It's, there's X's and Z's uh, in it and all kinds of. We'll put it up on the screen no, again. How's about that? No, no yeah, no, we will. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah, he, it's, if it's not up on the screen, I'm you know he committing. got lazy. <laughs> I'm not committing. Just yeah. <laughs> so if you're not looking at it on the screen right now, 
So what is it? What are we doing here with the, the, the cheese and the, and the chocolate? Same thing that we did. Uh, hopefully we're going to air these episodes in order, otherwise this is going to no. make no sense whatsoever. Well, it's going to make no sense. Um, the same thing that we did with our port tasting. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do this with the sherry. What do you call it? Comparative and... Uh, compare and contrast. contrast. So compare and contrast. We have uh, blue cheese. So we have a you know, salty right. Filton blue cheese. Um, and then we have a sweet, dark chocolate. Right. So we've got the... Um, the only kind of chocolate there is. I mean, have a sip of the wine first and we'll go from, we'll go from there. It's, the the colour is brown. I mean, really brown. It's brown. I mean, it's juice from 1927, love. I mean, what, old, what, do you, what do you want? What do you want? I thought it would be closer to dark red or something. Right. That's brown. Well, That's if you like think about right the there. older that you age, um, you know, these kind of, like red wines, they get, yeah, you keep doing it. Um, they're just, you know, you age red wine, it's going to go brown. If you had a Cabernet for this long, it's going to be brown. That's super sweet. It is, yeah. right? It is sweet. Yeah. Um, the reason behind this tasting... And I'm supposed to eat the cheese and then... Yeah, so let's do the same thing. Let's have a little bit of the cheese and then, I mean, literally right, wine right in your mouth. mouth. Yeah, straight at the same time. The idea is that the, the equal parts, you know, combined mm. are going to be, you know, better. Mm. Make you make that noise. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I right? never would have thought of that. Right? Mm. I mean, I know he's not just saying this, uh, but this is, it's, cause I actually tried it before we went on camera, just to be sure. That's yeah. really weird and good. Right? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never so it's like the Stilton, you might not be a big Stilton fan. Sherry, yeah. you might not be a big Sherry fan, but, but the two, two yeah. yeah, seriously, right? Yeah. It does, it does make sense. So I'm gonna um, try the chocolate. Yeah, try the same thing with the chocolate. It's gonna work, I, it's personally not as good of a pairing. No, because um, that contrast is what yeah, makes it Yeah, like really, it really works. Again, I mean, this, so this you know, is sweet on sweet. Yeah, so, you know, it should work. It's nice and straightforward, and the easiest pairing you can do, you know, sweet on sweet. Um, so that'd be a comparative. The contrast, we've got the contrast of the salt and the sweet. This will be comparative. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not as, you no, know, not as eureka unusual, moment, no. eureka moment, euphoric pairing That's as the. That's got a lot of alcohol in it, too, right? Yeah, 16%, uh, I believe. Uh, not yeah. quite as much. Um, with sherry, they actually add brandy. So they okay. you know, top it up with a little bit of brandy, you know, oh. boost up the alcohol. Um, but yeah, very That's why interesting grandma stuff. Was always happy. Exactly. <laughs> she just she woke up, she got drunk as quickly as possible, and then so if you want had to, to deal happy, with you all day. Drink some sherry, man. <laughs> See you guys on the next Wine God segment. Don't forget to watch my new online show I upload on Wednesday. I'll give you the scoop for the whole week about what's happening and talk about well food or well something fun anyway. You'll find it on my website. Now for you dads out there, I hope you're enjoying your Father's Day weekend and I'll see you back right here next weekend for a brand new episode of I Know Jack. But before then, I'll see you on the internet. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Now if this is your first time watching an iknowjacks.com video, I would love to have you subscribe so that I can continue to help you find fun things to do in the Jacksonville area. Every weekday, I do a daily video update to remind you of the things that are happening this week. Plus, we do features on great restaurants in the River City and a weekly video calendar of events to help you plan for awesome experiences. And last but not least, every week we create a new full-length episode on all the best places to eat local, drink local, and be local. So subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.